Fractured teeth are a very common and very painful problem in dogs and cats. A study from the University of Pennsylvania showed that 10% of all dogs have a fractured tooth in their mouth with direct pulp or root canal exposure. This is a very excruciating problem. Here is a picture of a fractured premolar tooth in a dog. The pink spot in the middle is the root canal or nerve. This is a very painful problem for the pet. However, because they are stoic pack animals, they will almost never show obvious signs. Here is an example of a recent fracture of a canine tooth in a dog. It is so fresh that it is still bleeding. If the previous cases are not treated, the tooth will eventually succumb to the oral bacteria and die. If this has occurred, the nerve will be dark and will not bleed as shown here. This does not include the numerous patients that have uncomplicated crown fractures where the dentin is involved but not the pulp chamber. This is a picture of an uncomplicated crown fracture. The large brown area at the tip of the tooth shown by the blue arrow is exposed dentin. This is a painful problem just like a toothache in us. It can also become infected. Both of these conditions require treatment and we will discuss them separately. This is a drawing of your pet's tooth. This is the part of the tooth you can see, and this is the part of the tooth you can't see. This is called the root. As you can see, the root is much longer than the crown. This is especially true in canine and incisor roots. Here is a picture of a canine in a large breed dog. The crown, or part of the tooth you can see, is shown by the red arrows, and the root is shown by the blue arrows. As you can see, the root is over twice as long as the crown, which is why we prefer to save these teeth rather than extract them. This is an upper fourth premolar, another very common tooth to fracture because it is the main chewing tooth. This tooth has three very large roots. These two facts make it also a very important tooth to save. Both of these teeth require invasive surgical extractions to remove. Within this tooth is a root canal. This root canal is supplied with blood vessels and nerves that come in from the mandibular or maxillary artery and nerve. They come up into the crown of this tooth in an area called the pulp chamber. This root canal system comes very close to the tip of the tooth, especially in felines. This cat has a very small fracture of the upper canine as shown by the white arrow. It does not appear to be a big problem on oral exam. However, once under anesthesia, the root canal could be probed. In this radiograph from the previous patient, you can see the exposure of the root canal system shown by the white arrow. The severe bone and tooth resorption shown by the red arrows is obvious evidence of the significant infection this patient has been suffering. That is why any fractured canine in a cat is considered probable root canal infection. What has happened is your pet has broken this tooth and directly exposed the root canal system. This is an excruciatingly painful position, as anyone that's had a root canal in the past can tell you. Unfortunately, our pets are very poor at showing signs of oral pain. Eventually, though, the bacteria within the mouth will come into this root canal system and kill it. We don't know how long this takes. We guess it's about two months. Once the tooth dies, the exposed root canal will appear dark. This is caused by the necrotic root canal tissues. If the exposure is probed, no bleeding will occur. Once the bacteria have infected this root canal system, they will use it as a bacterial superhighway to come from the mouth through the root canal and then start setting up infection here at the bottom. That's known as an abscess. Notice the black area which is shown by the arrows. This is the classic appearance of bone destruction from long-standing root canal infection. Here is an example of a maxillary fourth premolar with periapical infection. All three roots are affected as indicated by the arrows. Again, the infection has been present a long time to cause this much bone loss. Eventually, if this is not treated, the bacteria will come from the mouth into the dead root canal system and use it as a bacterial superhighway to access the underlying bone. Once the bacteria get out of the tooth, they are picked up by the bloodstream where they are transported to the rest of the body, such as the heart, kidney, liver, and brain, 
causing damage to these vital organs. So my job is to put a roadblock on this bacterial superhighway. There are two options as far as how to do that. The first option is to remove all of the soft tissue. We drill into the tooth and remove all of the soft tissue. We flush it out and get the root canal system as clean as we possibly can. And then we put our own filling material in, which is an inert rubber, the body doesn't know it's there, and an inert sealer cement. And it acts like the cork in a bottle of champagne. That is called a root canal. Here is a post-operative radiograph of an abscess canine treated with root canal therapy. You can see that the entire canal is now filled, blocking off the pathway for infection. Here is a pre-operative radiograph of an abscessed maxillary fourth premolar in a dog. Here is the post-operative root canal radiograph showing excellent filling. If the root canal is properly performed, the bacterial supply line is cut and the remaining infection can be effectively cleared by the body. This is a six-month recheck radiograph of the previous case. We see that the bone has regrown as indicated by the arrows. This indicates successful therapy and that the tooth has been saved. This is the six-month recheck of the previously treated fourth premolar tooth. As you can see, the bone has regrown, indicating successful therapy. The only other option that we have to treat this disease is to extract the tooth entirely. We prefer to avoid extracting large teeth, such as canines or upper fourth premolars, because not only are they critical for the patient's health and function, they are also involved in very invasive surgeries. This is the classic appearance of an uncomplicated crown fracture of the upper fourth premolar in a dog. The dark area shown by the arrow is the stained dentin which has been exposed. Note how thin the enamel edges are as shown by the blue arrows. So this is a drawing of an upper fourth premolar in a dog. It is the most common tooth to have an uncomplicated crown fracture. This is the crown of the tooth, or the area that you can see, and these are the roots. This tooth has three big roots. Within each one of these roots is a root canal. These root canals are supplied with blood vessels and nerves that come in from the maxillary artery. These root canals come up into the crown of this tooth in an area called the pulp chamber. Overlying this tooth is a very thin layer of something called enamel. Enamel is less than one millimeter thick in dogs and cats and it is a rock. Once the tooth erupts, enamel cannot be formed. If it is lost, it can never repair itself. Between the root canal and the enamel, this area is called dentin. Dentin is a somewhat living structure inasmuch that it has these little tiny dentinal tubules running at right angles from the root canal all the way out to the periphery of the enamel. It does continue on the roots as well. If we were to do a cross section of this tooth, what we would see is that this is the root canal and this is the enamel and here's the dentin. The dentinal tubules run at right angles from the root canal out to the edge of the dentin where they are covered with enamel. There are 50,000 of them per square millimeter, which is twice what we have in our teeth. Each one of these dentinal tubules contains what amounts to a nerve which when exposed will cause pain. What has happened is that your pet has broken this tooth and exposed a whole bunch of these dentinal tubules. That will create sensitivity. What can happen is that bacteria within the mouth can get into these little teeny tiny dentinal tubules and infect the root canal system, thus leading to infection throughout the body. Here is an example of a tooth which has become abscessed secondary to an uncomplicated crown fracture. Note that there is minimal damage to the tooth. However, the tooth is severely infected. All fractured teeth, no matter how small, need to be radiographed and treated. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a dental radiograph of this tooth and we are going to look for any signs of infection here at the bottom. This radiograph shows a maxillary fourth premolar with secondary infection. If there is infection here, 
or direct pulp exposure, then we must perform root canal therapy or extraction. If there is no evidence of any infection and there is no direct root canal exposure, then all we need to do for this tooth is to place a bonded sealant across it. This will block off any sensitivity as well as block off the pathway for infection. This is called a bonded sealant. It not only blocks off the pain and infection, it also smooths the tooth to decrease periodontal disease.